All right, welcome back. So today we're going to continue with vectors. We got a lot of stuff to cover. Um, here is an example of a danger of not remembering that C++ is copied by value. Take a look. I create a vector of doubles. Okay, maybe we put a space right there. And it's called A. And there's two of them. And they're both 1.0. I reset vector A by calling function reset. So notice I accept a vector of doubles. And I go through the vector. And I set everything equal to 0. Haha. -ha. After I reset the vector, so 0 all the values, I print out the two values in A. So let's see what the answer is. It should be 0, 0, right? Because I'm setting both of them to 0 here. Well, let's see what the answer is. Nope, it's 1, 1. And of course, you should know the reason by now. Because when you passed A to the function reset vectors, you passed it by value. That means there's a copy of vector A being created. You have simply modified the copy in the function. You have not modified the um, one in the main scope. If you wanted to do that, right, we all know what to do. You put an ampersand right there. Boom. Now it's passed by reference. And now if we run it, we should get 0, 0. And we do. Okay, so that was a little reminder there about pass by reference and pass by value, because it also applies to vectors. Okay. Okay, so this is a modify. This is a vector modification uh, example, and in this one, I'm I'm doing a bunch of stuff, but I just we kind of went over this one last time, but I just wanted to reiterate. Pop back takes out the last element in the vector, and it doesn't take any arguments. Find will find an element of value, whatever this third argument is, and it'll look between these two arguments. Usually, it's dot .begin and dot .end are the iterators. And it will return an iterator. Okay, And if that iterator is is not equal to dot end, then it was found. And then you know the location because that location is the iterator. And you can do stuff with that. For example, you can erase that item uh, using dot erase because dot erase takes an iterator. OK? Um, also, you can index anyone you can you can erase things out using integer indices using either dot begin plus an integer or dot end minus an integer so in this way in this way you can uh, use insert and erase uh, and just use dot begin and dot end and that plus or minus an integer to represent the location of course, uh, dot insert requires a second argument. And um, I, OK, so here's a good example of that, right? So dot begin plus 4, insert 999. That'll insert into location number 4, counting from 0. So just a quick example of like find, erase, and insert. So this is this next uh, example I'm going to show you is a example of how to erase things out of a vector. So this is actually really can be very um, problematic for students that haven't learned this trick about iterating over containers and modifying them. So take a look here. Uh, let's start out with this example where I create a vector of integers. 
I set the vector. Notice setting the vector just means simply clearing it. Dot clear does what you would expect. It basically removes everything out of the, the vector such that it's essentially uh, just like after you've instantiated it or created it. Then we'll push back into the vector uh, 10 integers from 0 to 9. That's it. Okay? So very simple. But now let's remove things from the vector the correct way by iterating backwards. Now perhaps I should have shown you the wrong way first. Notice here I'm resetting the vector here again. Set vector back to um, nothing. Or, or I should say, sorry, not setting vector back to nothing. Setting vector back to 0 to 9. Okay? This, so this loop right here, I'll kind of highlight it. This is the wrong way to um, remove things from a vector. Notice what I'm doing here. I'm iterating starting from 0, so iterating forwards, up to, but not including the size, which is 10, so 0 to 9. And then I say, if the element value is less than 5, which um, you know, half of them are, then, you know, because 0 to 4 is less than 5, then remove that uh, portion, re remove that from the vector, right? Because begin plus i would be that location. However, this does not work properly. And think carefully why this is. If you're iterating forwards and you remove things, now you're modifying what you're iterating over. That's really going to mess up um, what you're taking out. Okay? Okay. Perhaps I should start by showing you how this works. These indices I'm not going to touch. These indices are the indices of what's in the array. This is the, actu this is the actual array. So this is V. Now, the first time through we go, this 0 is less than 5, right? 0 is less than 5. So we'll remove it. Now when we remove it, the array that's left now is this one. This is now V. But we've already dealt with um, 0. Now the next one in the loop is 1. You see that? So now, so, so notice this is index 1. So now we'll come to here and we'll say, is this less than, is 2 less than 5? And it is, so we'll remove it. And so v now becomes 1, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Okay, we've now done 1. Now let's go to 2. Notice here is 2. That's at this location here. So now what does v become? 4 is less than 5, so let's remove it. 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Do you see what's happening? Now we're at number 2. Uh, or sorry, now we're at yeah, now we're at number 3. We did 2. So number 3, 6 is not less than 5. That's false. So well, we should end up with this, 1, 3, 5, 6. So let's, let's run it and see what happens. So here we are back at the code, and we'll run it. And you notice we end up with 1, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Now that's not what we intended to happen, but you see how wrong the answer is. Okay, The correct way to do it is this first way. So this was the original vector. Here are all the ones less than 5 removed. And this is the wrong way to do it. And you notice 
right? This was the, the one that produced the wrong output. And I, we went over the logic as to why that occurs. So long story short, whenever you want to remove stuff from a vector that you are iterating over or you're modifying it, you iterate over it going backwards. So how do you go backwards? Notice we start at size minus 1. Okay, So the size is 10, so the first indice must be 9. And we go until i is e greater than or equal to 0, because we also have to deal with 0. And we go i minus minus. There is one pitfall. Okay, And be careful of this. This is very, very um, an odd error to hit. But notice here on line 42, I used unsigned int. Okay, And here I'm starting from 0 and I'm going up. Whereas here, I did not use unsigned int. I just used int. If I use unsigned int here, I'm going to get a seg fault. And I think the reason is because on the last iteration, even though it doesn't go into the loop, i will be negative 1. But negative 1 is not greater than or equal to 0. So that'll be false. So it won't go into the loop. The loop will finish. However, i cannot have a value of negative 1 if I use unsigned int. And so even though we don't go into the, f to the for loop with that i value, it still ends up failing because it needs that negative 1 value to signify the condition for the loop to stop. So that's, I think that's why uh, we're getting a seg fault. And I can, I can show you this. Um, if I go, if I type in unsigned here, and if I um, if I save it, okay, and and I'll I'll compile it. Uh, this one was um, vec three b erase. Okay. So, oh, and by the way, here, look, I'll even turn on all warnings. So no warnings. Okay, ready? So now, if I run this, and I'm running this on the command line just to show you that um, I get a segmentation fault. Okay, and and that's the reason. If I if I go ahead and I modify it, and I take out that unsigned. And I save it, and I recompile it, and I rerun it. Everything's good. So that's a that's a really uh, a kind of a gotcha. You got to be careful of. Okay. Um, in any case, I hope you've learned that the proper way to iterate. Well, now, there's another way of doing this. You don't have to do it using this method. Another method to remove things is simply to create a new vector, a new empty vector, and put int pushback into it anything that you want to keep from the original. So in other words, now you've, this is, that would not be in place, right? Because you're making a new vector with the things you want to erase missing or not put in. So that's pretty easy too, right? So in that case, um, instead of erase here, I would simply uh, create a new vector. Uh, for example, if I wanted to do that here, I could go vector of ints, and let's call that vector A. And here, OK, I spelt int wrong. So in this case, um, I would say, now, not what is less than 5, but I would say, for example, I would say if v is uh, greater than or equal to 
let's change this, greater than or equal to 5, then instead of going erase, I would simply go uh, a dot pushback, and then I would go uh, vi, right? And then at the end, um, I could simply say, instead of saying print v, I would say print a, OK? So this is going to work as well. Um, but obviously, this is a different algorithm to produce the answer. And let me, let me run it. Uh-oh. I have a mistake here somewhere. OK, I saw my mistake. I forgot to put a, co a semicolon at the end of my line. Let's try it again. And there you go. OK? So um, now notice, right, since I'm, notice since I'm iterating backwards, this, I put it in the correct one. I'm going to get 986, uh, 98765. But nonetheless, the concept is the same. It's you, you either create a new, I mean, I can do that in the, in the wrong, I should have done that in the wrong way to show that it would work in that way. So um, maybe let's do that as a demonstration. OK, so here's our example. We've gotten a third alternate method, which we're pushing back things that are greater than or equal to 5 into A, which is empty originally. And then here, instead of printing A, sorry, instead of printing V, let's print A. And by the way, I think I forgot to fix this as well. We're not printing A here. We're still printing V in this one. This one was the, um, the, cor the correct way iterating backwards. So now that it's all done, let's run it and see what happens. So here is the original. And that's the correct way iterating backwards. This is the wrong way iterating forwards. Notice the 1 and the 3 are still there. And this is the correct way, but not in place. So there's, there's many ways to do things. Uh, but it's nice to see different approaches and different solutions. Great. Here's our next example. And this one is, is um, dealing with the order of items in a vector. So just to change things up a little bit in this one, I have um, changed the vector container from a, a, to chars. So this is going to hold uh, letters. OK? And I've called this one alpha, and I've called this one backwards. So if you remember, right, characters are actually integers in memory. So I happen to know that capital A is 65. And if I want the whole alphabet, I'll go 65 plus 26. So I'll push back, and I'll, I'm going to cast i, which is an integer, into a char. Uh, and essentially, that cast is basically here. I'm, um, an int is four bytes, but a char is one byte. So essentially, an int can go up to a really big number, but a char, I think, can only go up to like 256, I think. So I'm, I'm taking only the first byte. Um, but it doesn't matter. I could have made this one smaller. Um, but this works. So now, after doing that, I should have the letters A to Z. OK? And then I will iterate through alpha backwards from the last one to the first one. And I'll push back. into backwards, OK? Then I'm going to print alpha, printing the alphabet. I could have used the function to do the printing, but that's OK. And then I'm going to have another loop to print out what is in backwards. But this time, instead of using integers to iterate through 
the in, for the indices of the vector, I'm going to use iterators. So now I'm creating a vector, a char vector iterator right here. So the way to pronounce this would be a character vector iterator. And I'm setting it initially to backwards.begin. And I'm going to go until backwards.end. And I'm incrementing. And then I'm printing them out by dereferencing i. And i is the iterator. That's the technique for, essentially, I just want you to know, I don't have to use this method, but I want you to recognize how to, oops, didn't mean to do that, how to iterate over a vector using iterators like that, or how to iterate over a vector uh, using integers like that. Okay. Obviously, I think the integer method is easier probably more uh, and of course there is the C++ way of doing it as well that which uses the auto keyword and I haven't done that here okay however um, let's run this and I have something cool to show you there's a whole bunch of different ways to get the first and last element so one way is you dereference the begin iterator Another way, which is the most common way probably, is use square brackets and integer zero. Another way is using the built-in dot front method for vectors. These will all give you the first element. So how would you get the last element? Very similarly, except here's what you should remember. Dot end is not the last. Think of dot end in the same vein as dot size. So if you have 10 elements in a vector, what's the biggest index? It's 9. That's the way dot end works as well. So dot end minus 1 would be the last iterator index. OK? So another way of doing it, right, if you think of it, look, at, it's almost identical to using square brackets and going alpha dot size minus 1 and indexing it that way using an integer. Or you could use the built-in dot back. So let's, let's run this and you'll see what it looks like. So printing the alpha bet from forwards is A to Z. Printing it backwards is Z to A. And here are the first three different ways of printing, the, of getting the first element. And here's different ways of getting the last element. Okay. Now we haven't looked at the rest of the program, so we got to go back to the source code. And let's take a look at what else we have. Well, here is again I'm using dot find. Another example. I want you to see and get used to using dot find. Dot find does return an iterator. Okay, so I have to actually create a character vector iterator. And then I can set dot find, which so it'll look from the beginning of the vector to the end of the vector. Those are the arguments for dot find. And I'm looking for capital C. Now capital C is in there. I know that. And it's at indice 0, 1, 2, right? A, B, C. So it's at location 2, which is the third uh, letter. And if I say, it, here, this is how you look for it. You say, if iter equals alpha dot n, that means didn't find it. But I know it's going to find it, so it's going to hit the else. And then, and this is interesting. Here, on line 53, I'm going to see out the, the capital C by dereferencing the iter by putting a star in front of it. And then, if I want you to know the index of where it is, remember begin is 0. I cannot actually um, send iter to the output stream, C out. I have to actually subtract alpha.begin to get an integer out of it. So um, if, I, if I do this math right here, now that math, that this 
this, this section of this segment of code right here that I'm highlighting is going to give me an integer that I can actually recognize. Remember alpha dot begin. Be, be, why does that give me, by the way, if you think about it, why does that give me an integer? Okay? Because iter is an iterator and alpha dot begin is an iterator. But if you go iterator minus another iterator, you're going to get an integer. And that is the difference between them. So if we run this again, you'll see that it says C, and I'm dereferencing iter there to get that C, found at location 2. And that 2 right there is that subtraction that you just saw right here. There's the 2, iter minus alpha dot begin. So this is kind of interesting to how you would use the return of find. Because it, remember, it's returning an iterator. But how do you then convert that iterator, let's say, into an integer index? Well, there you go. You have it on line 53. How do you dereference that iterator to know the item that is held in that location? No problem. All you do is you put a star in front of it and you dereference that iterator. Okay? I hope that makes sense. Okay, there's something that I actually skipped over, and that is the way that I reversed, uh, or I, the way I created backwards, was by pushing things from alpha into backwards, but doing it, um, you know, from the end to the beginning. Let's take this code out, and let's do it a different way. So what I've done here is I'm now going to basically make a copy of alpha and assign it to backwards. So this assignment operator is actually going to call a copy constructor for the vector. And we're now going to have another vector called backwards that is identical to alpha. But how are we going to reverse it? And so I'm going to call reverse. Now, if you're wondering where does reverse come from, comes from, it comes from algorithm. So, and in fact, find and reverse are both from algorithm. So, again, it takes an iterator, like from that location to that location, backwards.begin, backwards.end. And in fact, if I now run and compile this code, it gives me the exact same output. So printing backwards, do you see, it works just the same as it did before. Now it's up to you which way you would prefer to, to, to approach this, either the for loop that I did initially or using uh, the reverse method from algorithm. Okay? But they both work. Okay, so the next example I wanted to uh, give you guys an opportunity with is sort, and that's also from algorithm. So if you notice here, uh, algorithm also has sort. You know, because if, if we go to algorithm, uh, there's quite a lot of things that we can, like for example, there's find, and um, that there's also modifying ones, which uh, reverse, I think, is in here. Should, there it is. OK. Um, but one of the ones that is um, super useful, the super useful one is sort. So what does sort take? So if we take a look at it, um, it's, it's going to take a first and last. It's going to take a first and last um, iterator. But also, there's another way you can use it, and that is you can actually supply it with a comparing function, which is a function that talks about it right here, a binary function that accepts two elements and it returns a bool. 
So if you notice here in this example, they're actually it's accepting two integers i and j, and it's returning i less than j, and it re and that is a bool, because the less than symbol is going to return a bool. So y you can use a custom function just like we did in Python uh, sort method to sort things. So knowing all this, so knowing all this, create a vector with 10 random integers from let's say 0 to 100 and then once it's created sort the integers based on um, just their value. This should be pretty easy. Okay so pause the video now and give it a shot. Okay, so here's our solution. Uh, so I've got my function that um, prints out the vectors. I seed my random number generator and I go into a loop, create some random numbers and then I assign them. So initially, I don't do pushback here because I'm creating it with size t uh, 10, and then I push them back, different opposite, different way of doing it instead of pushback. And I, uh, once I've created them, I print out the vectors and then I sort them with the sort from algorithm, and then I print them again. So let's run this and see what it looks like. So there you go. The top uh, row of numbers is unsorted and the bottom one is after I call uh, sort. Now what would be interesting to see is what if we were to sort something with our own custom uh, function. So here is an example of a basically sorting strings. We create a vector of strings with an initialization list. Let's print it out. Let's sort it and print it again. And you can see the words that I've chosen. I've chosen them uh, deliberately. So if we run this program, let's, uh, let's take a look at the output. I've got First, unsorted, I've got dogs, banana, animals, zoo, and R. And then I've got, now sorted, notice it's alphabetical, animals, banana, dogs, R, and zoo. However, I would like to sort those strings not alphabetically, but rather based on how long the words are. So how many characters are in the words. Let's try to f do that. So here is my solution. What I have is a new function that returns a bool called my sort. I could call it whatever I want. That's not important. But it's going to take two strings, x and y, and it's going to return the size of x is less than the size of y. So it's going to return true if x is less than y because I want uh, ascending order. So I want them to get bigger as they go uh, down. So let's try and notice here I am of a, a third argument for sort, right? So I'm going from begin to end, but I've supplied the function that I've written, my sort, as the third argument to the sort from algorithm. So if, if we run this, notice the first line, right? is what we uh, created them as. But then it doesn't sort them alphabetically. It sorts them based on how many letters are in the word. And so that is a nice way to customize your uh, sort uh, specifically for any type of uh, feature. All right. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. 
see you next time.